about who are they? I thought they're supposed to be because you go into the temples. You look at the temples in such a way as a safe haven for you. But God declares the decrees that don't you know you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Jesus is bringing a very significant word here concerning these people who they felt that was under what they call uh, rebellious, uh, slanderous. I think we look at one of our screens over here, and it talks about the process that they was unsubmittive. I think my wife said one of the words, she told me they were slanderous. And I think they was unreproachable. And they began to go out, and they was actually uh, uh, going into the temples. And as they went into the temple, they began to sacrifice, not coming under the authority of the Roman government, but yet being able to sacrifice unto God. Now, that, that brings a lot of highlight to this scripture right here. People who don't obey authority, people who are always constantly getting in trouble, people who seem to be uh, uh, out, of, uh, uh, out of society's eyes, locked away, as they say, as being animals from some cruelty deeds that they do. But even though they do cruelty deeds, it's not us for us to make the judgment. So I think we read over in the book of, uh, if we turn our Bibles over to the book of, we want to save right here to, in the book of Luke. We want to turn our Bibles over to the book of Mark. I want to show you something in the book of Mark and the word of God says something. It really brings a, a lot of significance to the scripture in terms of what we're speaking on today. Now we're coming out of the raw here. You know, there's no uh, prescript information that's going on here. Even though God gives a launching pad, but now at this present time, the Holy Spirit is already engaged. I can feel him moving right now in the name of Jesus. As God began to parallel these scriptures. The word of God declares and declares over in the book of Mark 13 that the that uh, even though we talk about over in the book of Luke, how they came into the temple, began to sacrifice the very sacrifices unto God, not being obedient to the authority of the land of Rome. And then Pilate, being one of the commanding officers under the Caesar's authority, took upon himself to bring some of his henchmen in and began to slaughter these men because they wasn't obeying over the Roman law. You, you have something to say, sweetie? No, no. You, under the Roman's law. And, and, uh, and the, and the word of God tells us over here in the book of Mark 13 as we begin to read. And I just want to get, I just want to get some of the microcosm of the scriptures. I want you to get to see this is such a powerful word and how we look at each other. how we're not supposed to really prejudge people because some of the things they do in their life is not pleasing to our eyesight because they don't go to church because they drink, they smoke, they do this and that. Well, God declared according to his word that he down the cross for every one of us. That we all was Gentiles once before, according to what it says in the book of Ephesians. He said, we were all caught, carried away. Ephesians 2 said, we all walked through the course of the world. The Romans tells us also that we all, you know, come short. Not only just Romans 3 and 23, but in Romans 3 to 11. Uh, well, chapter 3 and 11 to 12 talks about there's not one right, not one. So we begin to look at the scriptures. We bring some microcosms. I bring some cohesiveness of the scripture over here in the book of Mark. And it says over here that, that, that uh, in Mark 13, he said, I, Jesus came out of the temple and unto him and the master. He said, see what manner of stones uh, so, no matter stones, these buildings are here. And Jesus answered and said, "They see, these are the stone buildings, and there should be not one stone left upon another." Now, He's making a very significant thing there that we all not look at buildings and temples. Now, ain't nothing wrong with churches. I Bible believes, I believe the Word of God, so we all should come together to dwell in unity. But you got to be able to come together to know that how iron sharpens iron. We come together to be with one, help each other, not to be able to come to the house of God and slander one another and be able to judge and tear down one another. Because the Bible said we all fall in short. I mean, all you got to do is look at the book of Roman, Romans. And Romans gives you that very story. He said that's not one. That's right. Not one. We all done something according to Ephesians 2. We all did that, lived that lifestyle according to the, the course of the world. We all need to be forgiven. Tonight. We all designed, ladies and gentlemen, to work out our own soul and salvation. Am I, we, we speaking some, are we saying something here? We want to get you to see something here. That no one's in the position to be able to judge you in such a way to make you feel opposed to what God has done on the, what, what the Son of God has done on the, fro on the cross. They shed the blood for every one of our sins. We all may have the right to the tree of life. Amen. We all got that opportunity. You know, so we can't prejudge or put down anybody in any shape, form, or fashion. But Jesus began to declare with Mark 13 for the time. We want to make over and says, it Mark 13, they say the man of God came out of the temple and they began to talk to Jesus about what manner of stones these are. Now I can get into the stones about how we attracted to building size, click club games, titles, and positions. But the, but the word of God declares, according to the book of Corinthians, we are the temple. That if we go into the temple of God, there's so much in here in the name of Jesus. I want to get into this, but I just want to paraphrase some scriptures. For those who are listening, you need to take your Bibles. You need to go over to the book of Romans. Well, just write it down, not the book of Romans, but the book of Jeremiah and Jeremiah 7. When the word of God came to Jeremiah, and told Jeremiah to stand by the gates and begin to proclaim the word of God to those who come into the house of Judah. Uh, to the those who of Judah who's coming to the house of the Lord, 
And he began to talk about a very powerful word in the book of uh, uh, Jeremiah 7 about how the men of God should amend their ways in their doings. And how as they be continue to walk under the statutes and the precepts of God is put in place, they will be able to walk according to the word of God. And God allowed them to dwell in the land because that was something about to come against them. And God was trying to get them to understand if you change your ways, your wickedness, God allow you to walk in the kingdom of God Amen. and not be sacrificed by the very things that's on the outside. As you talked about this morning, the transformation, where we get outside the word of God and we find ourselves walking outside the course of what God designed us to be in, there's something that's walking out there waiting for us. Amen. The Bible declares the first Peter says like a roaring lion. Mm -hmm. You know, he's, he's waiting for us. I think John 10, 10 says he come to kill, steal, and destroy. That's right. he's, he's there to distract you for all the work that God has called you to do. But let's, let's focus on this a little bit. And we think about what it says in the Mark 13, that Jesus came out of the temple. And the uh, disciples been to came, uh, talk to him. And he took him on the model of Olive. And he told him, not one of these stones that you see were left of out of one another. All will be torn down. But this is how it comes into power back. We look at this right here in verse 3. He said, as, uh, excuse me, hello, <laughs> excuse me. He said, and as he sat up on the Mount of Olives against the temple, we know this is a place that be declared that Jesus is supposed to return at the Mount of Olives. That Peter, James, and John, remember, Jesus didn't deal with a whole lot of disciples, even though there was, they were there, but Jesus didn't hang out with a whole lot of them. He only talked about Peter, James, and John. Do you look at the scriptures, through the majority of scriptures, he only hang out, hang out with those three guys. It's not saying he didn't love the rest of them, but he put, I didn't say he put, I ain't going to say he put more emphasis in them because that'd be wrong for me to say that. I think he dealt with a lot of parables, information, talking through them because maybe they was more obedient. Maybe they took a more of a tentative ear. Sometimes we're on a football squad. I, 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 look, I don't want to get off steps here. Let me see. Peter said, Peter said to James and he answered Andrew and he said uh, privately, he said, I tell you that she'll be, see, I tell you when these things shall be. Now, they want to ask the question, as we look at the word over in Mark 13 once again, and he set up on the model of olives against the temple. Peter, James, and John, Andrew, ask privately. Now, when we talk about the private actions, let's think about it. And you're talking about a word that's given what we call a threat against a governmental society. Now, this temple was a part of the government. Now, we as men and women of God begin to make accusations against our president against a certain building, that's a terroristic threat. We can't do that. Same thing in the days of Jesus. But the disciples asked a specific question because Jesus gave them an answer in verse 2. He said, now one of these buildings will be standing and every stone you see will not be standing. It will all will fall. There will be not one left upon the other. Total destruction, total annihilation is what he's saying about here. Because we talk about the process of Titus, the Roman general came in, I think it's in 17 AD, he destroyed all that stuff. The prediction and the prophecy came to be true. The same thing Jesus is speaking about here in the area of, Mark, of Luke 13. And he talks about the process of how that, that, that as they came into the temple and they began to get against these Galileans because they was not being authoritative, they was not under the govern of what's called the law of the land. Mm -hmm. And they was doing what was right in the eyes of God. But men took upon their own hands to seize them and slander them and kill them because they was giving sacrifices to Christ. Am I somewhere? We got to see this. This is a powerful story. And how people will look at you when you're not a part of a temple dwelling. Mm -hmm. And you don't seem to have that physical walk that they want you to have. Mm -hmm. They begin to denounce you. You didn't go to church today. You didn't pray today. Now all these things are significant in the body of Christ for you to come forth and do the work of the kingdom of God. Because God got precepts and statutes and commands in place, and you need to obey all of them. He says on the book of Romans, I think it's Romans, it's, uh, Mark, uh, not Mark 13, but uh, the book of uh, Psalms or 133, he talks about the dwelling and the unity of a man to come together to be as one. I think Aaron talks about the process, and he gives an illustration about the anointing of the Holy Spirit. He said for the Aaron, the, the, the oil flows from the top of Aaron's head down his beard, down his garment. It's significance in saying that we got to be lined up with the Spirit of God. These Galileans were men who was actually doing what's right in the eyesight of God, but under the governmental authority, not being obedient to the authority that was in place under the governmental uh, commands of Caesar. Pilate took men into the temple and began to slay these men. The same thing we read in Mark 13. Oh, you got to get this. This is not going to come through some kind of theological understanding. Not to your education, it's come to revelation. Because God is showing us something right here in the scriptures. The Bible declares in the creeds that Peter, James, and John took him privately. Peter, James, uh, John, and Andrew took Jesus privately to the side and said, tell us when these things must be. Well, we understand according to the word of God in Matthew 23 that he's coming back. Mm -hmm. But he's coming back for a church without a spot of a wrinkle. Now, we know 
if we talk about the building without a spark of wrinkle, we, we, we know that's not true. Every church has got some kind of proclivity or something going on in it. There's no perfect church. Jesus is describing and declaring the creed that you are the temple. Get yourself together Amen. before you get somebody else together. Corinthians makes that very clear. Don't you know you are the temple of the Holy Spirit? Your word, and your, your your job as a man of God is designed to get your life together Amen. and not worry about someone else's life. You have too much going on in your life to point your finger at somebody else. And then when you see something happen to somebody in such a bad way, then you got the right to be able to call out and say, that should have happened to them. It don't matter how bad you are and how bad you may be in the eyesight of people. You don't have the right. That's right. They better come against somebody and tell them that's what's good, what happened to them. The devil is a lie. On that occasion it is. And I speak that with authority. We don't have the right to speak out on anyone about anything. Be you bishop, be you prophet, be you pastor, be you teacher, be you whatever. You don't have the right to speak down on anyone. Our job as being the one of God is to speak the very things that Christ tells them right here in Mark 13. Concerning the work that's going on over here in Luke 13. Because these men was doing right by God, but the government authority which was in place said, that, no, well, uh, no, that's not going to happen. You, you, are, you, you denounce our leader. You are, I'm not speaking negative. You denounce the word of Obama. And you, we see that all the time with, 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 with the president we have in place. One of our president, but one of the most disrespected presidents ever mm-hmm. in the presidency that he run. That they don't look at him as being an authority head figure as being of the United States. Because of his Caucasian color. So he's not being acceptable to the modern people in such a way that he's a head figure. And the same thing Christ speaks about here to how in the uh, fourth verse he said, Tell us when these things should be. In Mark 13. Now we're going to go back to Luke. We're going to go back to Luke 8. I mean Luke 13 because we want to talk about some significant things in here dealing with this particular chapter. Tell us when these things will be and the signs that will fulfill them. Uh, or the signs that will be fulfilled. Now, notice what it says in the fifth verse. Jesus answered and said, Jesus answered and began to say, take heed that no man, what? Deceives you. Now, what did he say right here? For many will come in my name, saying that I am the Christ, and it shall deceive many. And when the, he said, when ye shall hear the wars and rumors of wars, be not troubled, for such things must come to pass. It must, well, what King James said, must things need be, but the end is not yet. It's not, it has not yet come upon us. The things that we see is going around the world, the, the world news about the events, ISIS and all these things. Jesus said, that, that it shouldn't be a bother for you because we, the, as, as, as Apostle Wilson said, Dr. Wilson said, we are the 42nd generation of people, according to the book of uh, Bible's Mark and the genealogy about Christ. And the descendants thereof, we are that nation that's going to be dealing with some of the very prophetic things that's going on in the body of Christ right now or in the world. Now, we're talking about revelation. Now, we living in revelation. Amen. You're talking about revelation, what the word of God said, the coming of the, the riding of the horses, they're already riding. We're living in the days of Elijah right now. The same thing the prophets battled in the old days, we're battling right now as being men and women of God. Coming before the word of God, there'll come a time soon that we won't be able to read the word of God. We won't speak this out on TV because there'll be a law against it. Amen. And I'm telling you, we got to get ourselves together in the season which we're in and understand what the word of God is saying. But Jesus said, be, be, take heed that no man deceives you. So, Pastor Alex, how does that line up? What you're saying in Luke uh, chapter 13, it, it lines up very significantly. Because in this particular event that happened with the, uh, the, 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 the soldiers, the henchmen that came against uh, Jesus' uh, followers, which is called like Paul, and his boys came against the church of the way, began to beat them down, slatter them out. But he got his call. He got it. He got it on the road to Damascus. God did on the road to Damascus. Paul, Paul, you can't keep on kicking against these pricks. The same thing is speaking right here. Jesus saying about the very events that took place to the Galileans who was actually giving sacrifices in the temple. Doing was right by the eyesight of God. And then here come Pilate come in and mingle them because they're not under what's called a physical authority. So he take upon himself to bring his soldiers and kill these people in the temple of which was doing right by God. And we as being men and women of God that's in the temple, in the church, come outside and we kill the people who's outside the church who ain't even in the church. Because they may be a prostitute, they may be a drug dealer, they may be doing slanderous things, not according to what God wanted them to do. And also we look <coughs> down upon them. That's why the word of God said the harvest is truly great. The labors are few. I, I say this all the time. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, and you probably hear me say a lot of my broadcasts. If you ever get a chance to go to Mount Olive Church of Plano under Pastor Sam Finchroy out there in the city of Plano, out there at 300 Chisholm Place, I believe, you, you, you go into his temple, you hear the word of God, powerful man of God, 
and you begin to come out of his church, if he ever looked over the top of his door, you see a sign that said, you are now entering the mission field. 